Welcome to another episode of COVID Chronicles here in Etosha Heights Private Reserve. And uh, we are joined today by Dr. Ashibon from the School of Veterinary Science at the University of Namibia. And he will just take us through what happened today where we were dutching animals. Tell us what happened today. Yeah, I think we had a good day. We um, managed to get four eland and four kudus. Um, nothing died, nobody got injured. That's yeah, always yeah. priority number one, safety first. Um, helicopters, cars, dangerous animals, dangerous mm. drugs. So we, we're always um, happy if a day goes well. And today went extremely well. We had no issues. Yeah, um, yeah we started off with an eland out here in the, what is it, south um, western corner um, and then um, another very nice big pregnant email cow um, and then two kudus, they, they ran quite a lot, mm -hmm. uh, kept us chasing a bit for a while. Um, and then, yeah, after that, another, what was it, another eland and another yeah. kudu. Yeah, quite successful for the day. No, I think it kept us all fit uh, after today's exercise. Uh, but just touching on one of the elands, uh, it was a bit of a mission to get her down. I think you had to dot like three times while you are in the helicopter. But why was that the case? Yeah, it's every, always a bit difficult when you start on a new place for the first time. Last year, this time, the animals were really, really thin. Very few of them were pregnant. After the good rains we had, luckily, at least in some parts of the mm -hmm. country, this season, we the animals are very different conditions. So, um, and heavily pregnant. Um, so yeah, and then sometimes they they don't go down very easily. Um, yeah, and then you don't want to overdose, but you also sometimes don't want to give too little. So yeah, we had to we had to fill around a bit and get the dosages right and mm. yeah she was she was extremely big she was huge you saw her she's yeah. like a, a beautiful specimen of eland yeah. yeah um so yeah we 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 had that huge female and then later we yeah we didn't go for the biggest females in the herd <laughs> it was also interesting to see she was definitely the the um, leading cow in the group all the other youngsters wanted to stick around um didn't want to leave even when the chopper was very close to her so yeah we We'll get the leading cow there so it'll be quite interesting to see her movements and follow up what she's up to okay so as well part of the study i saw the students uh, that are with the whole program uh, were also taking some samples some uh, nozzle swaps some uh, droppings as well as blood but what is that going to be used for i thought we were looking at migration and yeah we we while we have the animals it's always good to a collect as much as possible because the capture is stressful to the animal and ethically it is important that you make the most of each capture. It is also always a risk to the animal even though we normally don't have problems but we have to keep in mind it is a potential risk. So um, from a scientific point of view even if you don't have a plan for every sample you should collect as much as possible and keep it in a biobank and then use it in the future for project research then you don't need to re-immobilize some additional mm. animals if you need samples. We do have a study on, on viruses. We've got um, some guys doing PCR at our university for 
viral diseases, so that's the nasal swaps. There's a bit of parasite work going on, looking at nematodes in the fecal samples, um, and then some goes into the biobank for future work as projects come along. And often you, you start thinking about questions as you get the data from the movement. You mm -hmm. say, well, what's happening here? And then sometimes it is good to have baseline samples, even if you don't really have the question yet. The question will come in future. Yeah, and I think also very good to when you take the samples, it's easier also if with the tracking of the, of the animal, let's say three months, six months down the lane, if you do, if you were to collect samples again from the same yeah, cow, yeah. sort of comparison mm -hmm. to see if it's actually still in good shape or what is the next step with in regards to the research. Yeah, yeah. And we also we, we have our students do undergrad research projects and if we have enough material it, it helps also there to put them onto some sensible project and we feel obviously wildlife is, is very yeah. sensible so we try to collect as much as possible material that they can work on in future then. Okay. And training, I mean sampling is part of the job later so we try to give each student the opportunity to collect each sample and process the samples, keep the records. Um, do the drugs, so uh, get all aspects of the job. From practical work to the theory. Yep, yep. That's no. the highlight of the course going out two weeks here in the bush, doing the real stuff instead of just in the books and the papers here. Yeah. No, that's what's exciting today. Just the whole experience, I think, uh, being able to catch these animals and still leaving them in their natural habitat and making sure that we don't disturb them. I know it was a bit of a challenge with the helicopter, but I think we did reach our objective at the end of the day. No, it's a very good day, I think, yeah. yeah. And I got to do the nice job up in the cot chopper. You guys on the ground get the dusty and the hard job. So ah, no, I'm you, also very happy. You definitely got all the nice shots, eh? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, no. Well. All right, thank you, doctor. Thanks, cool. Definitely was a very eventful day and uh, stay tuned for tomorrow's episode. Let's see what he has in store for us. Mm -hmm.